Okay, well, thank you, uh, Georgina Mosley. Um, you know, you're, you're the first person that we've in, in in basically months that we've um, doing an interview for our motivation inspirational project. Um, these interviews have been going for I don't know since the start of COVID pandemic, and and we continue to for over over two years. Um, but obviously, we've had a bit of a break. And what better way to, you know, start these interviews again than speaking to somebody so inspirational like yourself. Um, <laughs> so please introduce yourself, uh, Georgina. Uh, well, hang on. So Georgie, as you like to be called. See, I, love, I make lots of mistakes on these interviews, as you can tell, Georgie. Um, I don't it, do formalities. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm bad with names. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm really bad with names. Anyway, <laughs> Georgie Mosley. Help Harry help others. Please tell me your story and, and tell what, what Helping Harry is all about. Yeah, so I am, as you said, Georgie Mosley. So the local people in Birmingham will know me as Harry Mosley's mom and founder of Help Harry Help Others Cancer Charity, which is, a, I suppose, to summarise in a nutshell, is a charity that's been created through lived experience of cancer with Harry and his own battle with a brain tumour. Um, to provide support for adults and children with everything outside of, of treatment that they might need. Basically, all the real life changes that happen, um, that's what we do. But, you know, I think Harry was the inspirational one. You know, he set the charity up himself when he was nine in the last two years of his life. And during the face of adversity, obviously, going through cancer, he raised an over £750,000 for other charities through his famous bracelet making um, campaign, um, talking in schools and all over the country um, about why, you know, the why. And, and that was because even at his tender age, he knew more needed to be done to give support to people. And then when we sadly lost Harry in 2011, just through our own journey and seeing all that change. And I suppose that just the disappointment and shock and dismay at the lack of support actually in the heart of the community. So you, when you're away from hospital, away from hospice, there was just nowhere to go if you have a bad day, nowhere to help because I'd, you know, if for information and advice, because I'd had to give up work to become Harry's carer. And it was all that real life, you know, they're not pretty stuff that just felt wrong so thanks to Harry he left an amazing legacy and I didn't want to waste it so we carried on and made Help Harry a registered charity which we now support over 1200 families our youngest client is um, six our oldest is 86 um, we offer lung screening on site and over 20 different services um, for people affected by cancer from both one-to-one -one support and group support um, covering emotional, practical, financial needs. Um, yeah, so very proud of Harry, very proud of what we've created, but it's hard, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's, as I said, we, we, we met earlier, I think, um, early last year, I think, or before yeah. then, and we had a chat about, you know, fundraising and, you know, and you know, the support that helped Harry help others needs and um, you know and, and you know regards to local charities in the area where in some cases you, you're put on by the bigger uh, charities to take on their work without any kind of financial support um they you know talking about motivation and inspiration and what gives you that passion to keep going my children you know all three of them so harry's got a brother and sister danny and louis so um Louis and Danny are the ones that motivate me to just keep me here on this earth, um, you know, and to show people that whatever you go through in life, you know, you've you've got to carry on, you've got to keep moving. And and Harry is also my inspiration and the very reason why, you know, how Harry and actually the the people of today going through cancer in the here and now, it's you know it's Harry and those people that are my motivation for the I suppose the work of what I do um and Louis and Danny for just keep going on because as you can appreciate you know there's there's nothing worse than losing a child so but I've got two other children who very much need me here um you know um to keep going on so that that's what makes me get up and show up every day 
Fantastic. I mean, we talk about um, motivation, inspiration in the community and, you know, it's why it's so important. But, you know, uh, how does that support help Harry help others? And, you know, thinking from, you know, what's in the community and, you know, and I, I you know, worked in schools and, you know, and everywhere else and I do part of inclusion diversity uh, consistently for the last 20 years. Um, you know, and I, I, you know, was in a school with a young man who himself had just been diagnosed with, with cancer at, at primary school. He was in year four and, you know, the the kind of rebellious and kind of aspects of every day dealing with that is, is quite hard. So why is it so important? Well, inspiration creates motivation um, and together they, you know, simply give us the purpose and focus. It, it, it's all that combined that motivates me to create the vision for Help Harry. You know, the voices that, you know, the pain, the frustration, the isolation, the vulnerability, the diversity, you know, it's all of that that comes together in this part that creates a voice of um, and the need. You know, I hear the need and that's what motivates me to put that vision into into practice. Brilliant. I mean, with regards to help Harry help others and, you know, and all the fa families that you support. I mean, how does that support your, what does help Harry help others? How do, the, how do you support your community? How do you support your families in the community? So it's providing a home from home environment. You know, it's very relaxed as you know, hospitals and hospices, they're great places, but none of us want to be there unless we absolutely have to be, do we? So it's about a community hub that's very homely because to me, you know, when you're at your, your home is your respite. And when we're at home, we all get comfy and that we need people to feel at ease because when they're at ease, they open up. The nature of the centre is about opening up, whether that's people need a shoulder to cry on or need some, you know, professional therapeutic counselling, whether they've got financial issues, you know, debts building up. It's a bit, it's a very brave thing. And it's, a, you know, but us as a society, we only reach out to like our GP when we're at absolute rock bottom. But at that point, you know, sadly at the moment with, you know, mental health, high on the agenda you know the agenda and it's affecting everybody right now in this quite a crazy world we live in it's then six nine months waiting time so the center is about offering immediacy empathy and urgency so people don't need an appointment they can drop in or they can pick up the phone and then pop in they don't there's no waiting times no referral process no postcode lottery because of the powers of technology and zoom we have people all over the country that access our support. And um, and that's, I suppose it's just what I wished, I've tried to create what I wish was there when we were going through it with Harry. Um, but as I say, it's the voices of today, people living with cancer in the here and now that absolutely create that vision because our st story is obviously, you know, 12 years ago now. So you're creating an empathy aren't you in, in some respects because obviously you know from from my point of view and working in disability sport and, and inclusive adaptive in the community it's about understanding and empathy with others that you know yourself that have you been through you know the the kind of conditions i mean you know thinking about um families and young people uh what would your message be to support you know parents young families um young people people in the community who have been and are going through trauma, you know, impacting issues, dealing with disability, conditions, issues and crisis as part of their day life, especially with Help Harry, Help Others? Focus on today. Quite simply, you know, the here and the now, because it, it's quite often that our own thoughts you know, they create a reaction to our feelings and our mood. And sadly, that can be a, a, a downward spiral in our mental health. So it's focus on today, reach out, get as much support as you can. And, swat, and, you know, I understand people's pride and their dignity. Nobody likes to ask for help, but there are some just incredible places and actually unleashes a new lease of life when you just make that really brave step and to get the support that you need but you know it's not always you might have a very bleak today but it's not always going to be like that you know yeah. it's always yeah. focus on 
you know, focus on the today, but don't think that life is always going to be like today. Thank you. I mean, you know, you, you, you talk about what, you know, your own experiences and with regard and with regards to your own experience. How do you, as a as a person who runs Help Harry Help Others, and you know, you have an amazing team around you, but how do you in your daily life, you know, um take care of your own mental well-being and you know build on that deter resilience and determination? Aha, uh -huh, good question. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, it's hard because, you know, I do find it very hard to say no. And like you, you know, and I'm sure you you're just telling me about your 12 hour days, you know, I'll go home, I'll go to sleep very early. Um, but I suppose mental health has been a part of my life all my life. You know, my mum suffered with mental health and um, it, it actually resulted in her taking her own life. So, so I am very good at recognising that, you know, I need quiet time. So I love when I go home, sometimes I just don't speak to anybody because, you know, when you're, when you're doing something that can be quite forward facing, I get sick of the sound of my own voice. So for me, silence and my own space is just really good for me to, um, you know, or I lock myself away doing a bit of baking or or, me, or crafting <laughs> <laughs> when I get a chance. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We are, I mean, you know, as I said, the, these interviews have been going for over over two years. This is our first one what we've done in, in quite a while. And it's a pleasure to have you on, uh, Georgie. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we have a quick fire round. Uh, which yeah. we, brought, we brought in um, as part of a kind of a respite from a kind of intense questions that we normally ask. So thinking that about our quick fire round, we've got five questions for you. Um, the last one is obviously a. a more than one sentence uh, but yeah. I these are like quick as you can so what is your favorite food anything spicy <laughs> okay so your favorite drink alcohol or non-alcohol <laughs> well this is sort of <laughs> up to you what you can say as i said that we don't have any black There's... coffee or i'm partial to a cocktail <laughs> fair enough um your favorite tv or film anything crime dramas and if anybody's got any recommendations because i'm all out of what to watch yeah <laughs> love to binge watch a crime drama fantastic yeah. uh favorite music anything upbeat and that i can sing my head off to in the car that probably reverts back to your question about mental health there's nothing better i can't sing by the way i sound blooming awful but um, I love a good sing in the car to let everything out. <laughs> Fantastic. And if you had a superhero power, what would that power be and why? Ooh, superpower. Healing. Yeah. Healing. It's a horrible thing to, especially I think for loved ones, to watch somebody going through something. So I think to have that power to heal to make everybody okay and yeah I think healing would be I think that's just the carer in me yeah don't like to see anybody going through something whether that's mental health you know abilities illness just a healing to make everybody okay thank you um we've got two more questions before we finish uh, and then I'll stop recording um but please stay on the line because we will have a chat as well um talking about obviously help Harry help others and yourself you know what is the future for Georgie Mosley and help Harry help others it's probably a timely thing that you've asked me to come on so I have for probably the last four or five years been trying to take that step back because for me, I think when we first opened our cancer centre in 2016, um, to me, as the founder of Harry's mum, the model was complete. I felt like my job was done. Um, didn't mean for me to be here and certainly not, you know, 12 to 15 hours a day, most days. Um, so and but then we've had land regeneration where we got kicked out of our last cancer centre building then we've had the pandemic so there's always been something you know and I, I as much as it's in the vision and where I want to go and to take a step back but I also think it takes a good leader to recognize that sometimes you get to a point and you need to bring in a different skill set 
So that's that's my plan for 2024 to actually, of course, help Harry's my life. I'm always going to be involved. But in terms of operationally, the day to day, and it's it was a really hard decision for me, but it's now time for me to hand over the reins for the day to day running. Because all I care about is how Parry being the best that it can be. And I feel like I've got it as far as I can. And now, you know, it's about embracing, you know, somebody to come in and look at what we've built, the way that we've built it and say, well, actually, you know, we can make things better. Um, and that excites me. But don't know what that then means for Georgie Mosley, you know. Um, I'm always, you know, it, it might mean that... It, people that support us and the community get to see me more because a lot of my time is spent dealing with things that doesn't need to be me as Harry's mum. So um, I think they'll be putting me in a wheelbarrow and wheeling me out and hopefully ra we can raise some more money. Who knows? But but that's the, yeah, the wheels are in motion for that already. And I think 2024 is going to be a great year for me being able to just breathe a little bit and um, get excited by somebody's new and better skills to come in to help Harry. Well, um, as I said, you, you're, well, you know, you're an inspirational person, Georgie. And, you know, the, the last question relates obviously to motivation and inspiration. Um, and we always think about, you know, we, we, when we started, we think about quotes that support that. So if you could think of a quote to support motivation, inspiration, and maybe a quote that supports how, help Harry help others, what would that quote be and why? Okay, so there's two that I use a lot. One which people will have heard of, I'm sure, which is vision without action is merely a dream. Vision with action can change lives and even the world. I tweak that a little bit, by the way. <laughs> but it is a well-known, you know, I, I love, our cancer centre is all about positive affirmations, you know, and I think we all need that sometimes, a reminder that actually, you know, we can do anything and then one that I created myself um, that was inspired by my Harry, that regardless of your age, your wealth, your lifestyle and your well-being, you can achieve anything in life if you are passionate enough. And the reason for that, you know, Harry, look at what Harry did from the age of nine to 11, council estate boy, raised all this money despite going through cancer. You know, made his way to meet people in London. You know, the England footballers team spoke at the House of Commons. But that was through hard work, not giving up. And because he was passionate about his friend, he taught me that, you know, I I was a trier at school, but I'm not the sharpest tool in the box. So everything that's here, and this is what I say about recognising good leaders, recognising to move on. You know, it's just through hard work. It's not brains, it, you know, it's um, so for me that Harry inspired me. And I just thought if Harry can achieve all that he did, there is no reason why I can't. I don't need to be a cancer specialist. I don't need to be medically trained. But you know what? I've probably got the highest qualification in life living through cancer. Um, so if you can use something whatever that might be to benefit other people, to benefit yourself, if, if it's a business idea, just believe in yourself and you can make it happen, as Harry would say. Georgie, thank you so much for doing the interview. Um, I mean, I know you, you still fundraise and you did do a boxing match for that. Uh, how, did, how did your boxing match go, by the way? <laughs> I lost. What, the, the L shape above my head, yeah. What? So... You had, you had the courage to get in that ring and support what you're, you're trying to raise money for. And, you know, and that's part and parcel of what you do every single day. So good for you. Yeah. Anything that raises a book. You know what? I absolutely loved it and I would absolutely do it again. I'm training at the moment and, you know, I might have more time on my hands next year <laughs> to, to, to repeat it and hopefully win. <laughs> Fantastic. Georgie Mosley, help Harry, help others. Thank you so much for doing the interview. I'm going to stop recording. Uh, we'll have a, don't don't go anywhere. We'll have a chat, um, and uh, we'll share. Thanks, we'll share that before that goes out um, live. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.